Hello everyone, how are you doing today? It's me again, back here with another episode of the Student World Spotlight. And today we're gonna put in the spotlight and show you a 360 view of CSU Pueblo. That's right, Colorado State University in Pueblo. Yeah, I hope you're as excited as I am, guys, because there will be lots of tips that we'll be sharing with you, lots of cool possibilities out there for all of you that are what, that are planning to study abroad and are considering that you ask as a possible option. All right, so let's see how many people we have here already. 57 people with us here today. Oh my God, so many of you loving it. I love the emojis, by the way. Uh, who is that? Kushiara Nasni. Love the emoji, Kushiara. I hope you're doing well. Is Stephanie here as well? Sending hey, Shakina. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Why don't we start like putting where you're watching us from? Is it morning, afternoon, or evening where you are? Right here in Europe is evening, but it feels like a uh, end of the day, afternoon, right? Because we are in summer. Thank God. So uh, the the sunset has been lately like 11 p.m. or something. Anyway, yeah, so please do tell us where you're watching us from here. Love the engagement uh, as always. Again, guys, as you know, every time here on the on the, our lives, the goal is that the audience of today's live needs to beat the audience of last week's live. All right, so show more engagements and more questions. Like it just interact with us, all right? Uh, yeah, so lovely, Stephanie. Oh, you're in Peru. Lima, is it Lima? 2 p.m. right now, cool. Oh, Beatriz from Portugal. Oh, wow, nice. Well, afternoon in Sao Paulo, Eduardo. Oh, nice, nice one. Love Sao Paulo, been there, lived there for lots of years. South Africa, this is the thing I like the most, guys. You know, the fact that we have people coming from all over the world watching us. Also, it's a good chance for you to interact, interact with each other in the chat if you want. Maybe meet new people, who knows? Uh, but yeah, so, oh, 8 p.m. in Nigeria, so very similar to, to here. Yara in Brazil. Cool, guys. So why don't we start talking about this amazing university that is joining us today here. Uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, don't forget to subscribe here to our YouTube channel because every week is we have more and more at Steady Abroad opportunities coming up. We love to share those things. This is what we do here at the Student World. Our mission is to help you go abroad. All right, so don't forget to subscribe here. And again, if you like what you're watching, give us your thumbs up. If you don't like what you're watching, thumbs down. It's fine, folks, because for us, any kind of feedback you can give us that can help us know if we're actually in the right path, right? So you like? Good. You don't like? Let us know as well. All right. And don't forget to send your questions, comments, whatever it is. Interact with us. Make this as interactive as it can be. All right. So moving on now with 66 people joining us here today. Uh, I have the pleasure to welcome today to the show Anais Escobar. She is representing CSU Pueblo. So please, guys, welcome Anais Escobar to the show. Hi, Hi guys. How, are you? how are you? I'm doing good. Are you excited? I'm very excited to be here, part of the student world session. So I'm very, very excited. Did you see like how many people we have? We have 70 people already. Yeah. Hi guys. Hope you're doing well. I see a lot of places. Yemen, Mexico, Bangladesh. I love this diversity. We have Jamaica, Iraq, Venezuela. Yeah, so many people, so many people. Uh, cool, Leonardo is joining us, Sakina, everybody else. Nice, so Anais, today we want to talk about study in the US, right? And we want to <laughs> know more about this amazing university called CSU Pueblo. Uh, so why don't we start actually playing a video uh, about like CSU, just to give a quick intro of what, what's coming up. Perfect, let's do that. Let's go! Here at CSU Pueblo, we want you to experience more, whether that be inside or outside the classroom.
CSU Pueblo is a place to achieve your academic goals, get involved, and prepare for your future. CSU Pueblo, CSU Pueblo is accessible, accessible affordable, affordable, and achievable. Join your pack. Apply now at csupueblo.edu. This is my favorite video. <laughs> you know what I like the most about like the, the universities in the US? Their campus. It's just like it's blow minding. Like in Brazil, we don't have that kind of I'm from Brazil, by the way, guys. But uh it, there we don't have like this amazing campus. Like the, your campus is quite fantastic, right? Yeah, I'm very I'm very happy about it. I'm from Venezuela, by the way, guys. So I was an international student, as you will be one day um but yes that's one of the things that u.s campus brings to the study abroad experience is not only about the academic which is great is amazing but you also have a student life as you saw at the beginning of the video it's about the atmosphere it's about sports it's about concerts it's about experiences that you will live as a university student so that's something i love as well yeah so why don't we start? Because we're going to be talking about like many of these folks here. They they're planning to study abroad. They're considering the U.S. as a as a possibility, right? Uh, but before we get into like understanding like uh, what are the, the 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 how does the U.S. education system works and all that, and, and get to the tips that we're going to be sharing and so on. Why don't can you like introduce uh, like uh, briefly like CSU? Who is CSU and and why should people consider CSU as a great option for study? Of course. So we are Colorado State University Pueblo. We are located two hours away from Denver, which is our capital. Um, we're, in, we're a small university. We're a state university. We're going to be talking a little bit more about public and state universities later. But we're a state university. We're part of a system. So that gives us a lot of different resources to the university. We have more than 80 programs. I will say that our top five will be mechatronics, business, of course, uh, political science. So if you like international relations or anything like that, that's political science in the US, psychology and biology. So we have all types of programs though, but those are over top five, I will say. Um, another thing that we like to mention all the time is that we are all about personalized education. So that means that your classrooms are not gonna be 200 students. It's actually gonna be mostly 16 to 21 students per classroom. So your, your professors will get to know you by name. They're, they will know who you are by the time you graduate for sure. And they will be cheering you at graduation. Um, we have um, coaches that help you get those academic uh, goals uh, achieved after four years. Most of the majors are four years in the US, so just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, Colorado State University is located in an amazing state. We're in Colorado. I would say it's the best state in the US, but I'm a little bit biased, so <laughs> it's beautiful. So if you like mountains, if you like to ski, to go rock climbing, hiking, we have all the all the seasons, so we have winter. When it's winter, it's very snowy. When it's summer, it's very hot. So just so you guys know, we have all types of weather. Um, people are super friendly. Uh, one of the things as being Venezuelan that I was very, very surprised when I arrived to the US was that the people in Pueblo were extremely nice, extremely nice. They're always trying to help you, trying to accommodate you and trying to teach you a little bit about their culture and they want to know about yours. So th that makes it amazing in my opinion. So that's Colorado State University in 60 seconds, 90 seconds, however long I took. <laughs> cool. Uh, again, yeah, so many, uh, we already have questions coming up. Uh, yeah. Something coming up from Yusair Ali asking for more information on international student admissions. We're going to get to that. Uh, user, just hang in there for a little bit. Uh, but before, I just wanted to clarify some things because uh, for many of us, and I include myself in this, and I even like work with international education, there are some things about like the the way the education systems in the U.S. works that I'm not even familiar with, and I, and probably like most or some of the folks here, they they have some of the you know similar questions. The first thing I wanted to like clarify is. What is actually like the academic year in, in the US? Because 
it, it, for example, in Brazil, we start from January to December, right? But but in the U.S., it's different, isn't it? It's very different. So yeah, so the academic year actually starts in mid-August, at the end of August, and it goes until May, okay? You will have a month of vacation in December, mostly, or like two, three weeks, depending on the school, they will give you two or three weeks of vacation during that month, and then start again in January, but our academic year starts in the mid of August, eh, the end of August. So it depends on where you go, where it will start and where it will end, but usually that's how it goes. So it's very, very different for sure. Cool. And uh, the other thing, like, and this is for both if you're doing like your bachelor's or if you're doing your master's, right? Correct. Correct. Another thing that is important to mention is that even though we start in August, that doesn't mean that you cannot start in January. A lot of students also come and start their careers in January as well for master's or an undergraduate. So we don't have, we, you don't have to wait a whole year to start your career if you, for example, if you're in Brazil and you're graduating high school in November, December, you don't have to wait until August. You can come in January as well. Cool, all right. And uh, so I mentioned here like some of the, I mentioned bachelor's program and uh, master's program, but in the US there's also like a different like names for that. If you guys say undergraduate programs would be like the equivalent of bachelor, is that correct? And graduate yeah. programs, for equivalent to masters. That is correct. So undergraduate programs is anything that is after high school or in, and then graduate programs will be after you graduate from university. So you need to complete a degree in order to do a graduate program. So it can be either a master program. Um, if you, there is also PhD programs that you can go into, but those are a little bit more complicated. We're not going to talk about those. But yes, you for, uh, undergraduate will be your first step out of high school, and then you can go into graduate programs, which is a master's or postgraduate. Cool. Uh, guys, do you have like questions that you want to ask about like this that we were talking about, like that, how the education system like works and all that? What are the different... Uh, so anything like similar to what we we're talking about here, because uh, there are many things that I didn't know. But, like the other thing, like I always get confused with, is the credit systems, right? Mm -hmm. what does that mean? What is that? Well, it's a little bit complicated, especially if we compare it to Latin America or other places in the world. Like we, most universities are public or private here. But public does not mean that it is free. It's a still pay for. Uh, you still have to pay for it. And private is just that the money is not going into the state, nor they receive money from the state. So, for example, I come from a, a state university. So that means that we get some funding from the state, but most of the revenue is coming from students' tuition. So, but it's a small percentage. Uh, that we get from the state. So just so you know, there is a very huge difference between what public means in other places in the world to what in what private means in other places in the world. So just to keep that in hand. And um, just so you guys know, something that we didn't mention with the um, degrees undergraduate and graduate, um, I just thought about this, is like, is people can do two undergraduates. So like, for example, if you finish your bachelor's degree in Colombia and you want to do another bachelor's degree, you can do that and you will be called degree plus student because you already had a degree, but you just want a new different area. So that's another terminology that is not very common in most countries. It's very American, I would say. Well, I didn't know that, but it's, this second degree will be four years as well, or? It, no, it will be less because you already graduated from another university, so you could graduate within two years out of another bachelor's degree. So mm -hmm. cool. another thing to consider, guys, so just so you guys know. Is there anyone that, uh, in this situation that has like finished the, the, your bachelor's or that's about to finish university, but it's also considered like a different uh, uh, program as well before like moving on to the to the master's level because I saw here that we got like some uh, some people saying that uh, I think uh, I might have missed the question here 
we, again, we're going to address all of, all of your questions, guys, coming up soon. Uh, so don't worry about that. I see Lel sent a question about like how much is the academic, um, uh, you know, tuition. Uh, more questions about what else we have here. Uh, I want to ask about the importance of having a, a G, G, CGPA. I'm not sure if it's GPA. Is it? Of yeah. Three point, yeah. Let, let, uh, let's move it on to this one very quickly, just so I don't miss it up. Uh, okay, I want to ask the important of having a different CGPA, a master's. It is very important. It depends on CGPA. It's GPA. Um, hello, I'm, I'm sure it's very late in Nigeria. So thank you for <laughs> joining us. So really, really thankful for that. Um, so it is very important to have a 3.0 GPA. Most masters will require it to be able to be part of it. So if you're going to grad school, like you said in the message, probably it's very important. And remember, 3.0 out of four. So it depends on what the, the high number is in, in Nigeria. I don't know if it's out of five or out of four. So 3.0 out of four will be necessary for most postgraduate programs. Sometimes more though, sometimes they ask for more. So just cool. keep, in, keep in mind asking those questions to the universities that you're applying to. Yeah, so I see here that people are very, like, I think they're very familiar with, like, the things, like, the way it works in the U.S. Because I see most of people are already, like, sending questions about, like, the application process or more specifically about the program they want to study. So I'm going to fast forward to this part. Uh, let's, like, I, I, now that, that we know how the education system in the U.S. kind of works, uh, what tips do you give to people to finding the best university, the right universities for them? Well, my, okay, I always give four tips when I talk to students. The first thing is like, you need to make it, most of the students I talk to are making a decision with their family. So deciding what's the budget in your family is very important to find a university that will fit into that budget that you, you talk with your family with, okay? So talk about that. Another thing that you need to consider is, are you okay with big cities or are you okay with small cities? Because it's very different what a big city is in your, in, in your country that what a big city is here in the US. So do you like a place that have public transportation? You don't want to drive, you, you prefer public transportation. Or do you prefer a place that where you have space? Um, another thing that you need to, to, to think about is like, well, if I want to have a room for myself, for example, if I want to have a room for myself, is it likely that I'm going to have that in a big city because it's more expensive? Or is it more likely that I'm going to have a room by myself in a smaller because it's cheaper? What are those things that are important? Like where I'm going to live, the budget, of course, of your family. Um, am I okay with later on maybe driving or do I want public transportation to suffice my necessities to move around? And the other thing is what interests me? Like, I, am I interested in sports? Like, am I interested in hiking in the mountains? Do I need to live by the beach or can I live by, the, by a lake? So those things are very important because you're spending four years or two years, depending on what program you're deciding of your life in that place. So you need to feel like home. You need to call that place your home for a little bit. So it's important that you decide what it's important to you as a person as well. And of course, the academics is very important as well, that it matches your interests academically, um, that they have professors that you like. But in most of universities, I mean, every university in the U.S. is going to say, we have the best professors, right? We have the best academic programs. But what does it mean the best place for you to live for four years or two years? Yeah. And uh, you, uh, you brought up two very important points. Because uh, one of the, I mean, it's studying the U.S., it's, it's a no-brainer, right? So mm -hmm. the universities are, you know, recognized worldwide, the education system's all good, the country's nice and all that. The only, the, or the main barrier is the, the the price itself, right? And you mentioned that 
like live in, for example, Pueblo, right? Pueblo is a smaller city, so the cost of living will be cheaper than like living in big cities. And also CSU is a state university who tends to also be uh, more affordable than private universities, right? That is correct. That is correct. So depending on where you go, depending on the expenses. So when you're making the decision budget wise, for example, like you decide you want to go and study in California, it's not the same living in LA than living in a smaller city in California, because even though maybe the university is cheaper, the living costs are going to be super high because it's LA is a bigger city. The same is with Pueblo. The good thing is that we're a state university, so we're cheap, but affordable. And then we have over a uh, Pueblo is one of the most um, affordable cities in the US. So that helps as well keep the cost down. So you have to think about all those things when making a decision on where to study. It's not only the cost of the university, but also the cost of living. Cool. Uh, it's a, I'm so happy, Anais, because we are getting so many questions here. I see I, that. I, I'm not even like saying to pretend that we are popular. No, but it's true. <laughs> like we're getting so many questions. I love it, guys. So I I just my only concern is because we we came up with like a, a structure of topics that we want to talk about that we want to cover to help you make things clear for you, right? My only concern is that if I address some questions now it might get things a little bit confusing but you tell us what do you want do you want us to keep answering the questions like getting small breaks to answer questions and keep following the topic or do you want us to address the questions at the end so please tell us here at the chat all right uh but yeah so i wanted to to bring it on so uh it's something uh that you that you mentioned again because uh, we're talking about we were mentioning like how you guys are more um uh, affordable right you are an affordable very good affordable option which is a very important but at what place uh what other ways like uh, these people that are watching us here can find to make it affordable make it that it it, it they can you know no matter what the their budget is they they can find ways to make this uh, study in, in the u.s a reality reality that's a very good good and important question it depends on what the background of the student is at the end of the day so for those students that are excellent academically for example there is a scholarships for you guys so talk to for us for example in csu pueblo we have merit scholarships so scholarships that are based on your grades from high school so depending on how good of a student you are depends the amount of money that you will get so that's very important. And another thing like we have done, and we're a little bit special in that way, is that we created um, scholarships based on countries. So for example, Cadu, that you're from Brazil, we are we do have a Brazilian scholarship that is based on the NM. So it's based on exams that are you are going to take no matter what, because the NM is part of your graduation um so those are things that you need to ask your admission counselor like what scholarships do you offer for students that have high academic standards because there is ways that we can help you but you need to tell us because we sadly i cannot read minds i wish i could but i cannot read mine so you need to talk to us and tell us um what exactly your scores are um, and then where you're from, if you are a high performance student, or for example, what if you're an athlete? That's another important thing. Like what if you are a soccer player? Let's just pick soccer uh, out of all the, the, the sports, but if you're a good soccer player and you know that you have been competing for eight years of your life, 10 years of your life, that you have a high performance as an athlete and you're part of the NCAA, you're already registered for the NCAA. Those are things that we can connect you with, with the coaches. Of course, I don't know anything about soccer, so I'm not the one deciding the scholarships there, but I can pass you along to the soccer coach and, and he will decide if he needs a, a, stu a student like you in his team. So 
there is various ways to be honest and of course there is loans that you can look up in your in your home country you can look at um private what we call private scholarships so like for example coca-cola gives scholarships uh to students to study abroad to you but those are private that those are not done by the university but we can direct you to those websites at least cool yeah so Bringing up one question from Isabella here. So she was like asking like if there are scholarships available for undergrad uh, international students for financial aid. So yeah, Anais was just addressing that. And um, let me see if we have any other questions related to this topic as well. Uh, uh, what about a scholarship for artists as well or only athletes? Um, depends on the university. For us, sadly, we do not have scholarships only for artists, but I know there is a lot, especially universities that are arts based, they will have something related to it as well. So, yes, I'm sure in other universities you can find um, scholarships for it. Cool. And so, like, can you say that again? Like, what are the the, the programs that uh, CSU will offer? Like, the, the main areas? And because I know that you guys are, are super strong in some specific areas, like engineering, like one of you, like your engineering program was paint, like, you know, among the, the I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, for our engineering, under for our undergraduate engineering, we're top 100 in the US. So yeah, we're very strong in engineering, mechatronics specifically in industrial engineering. Um, but we're also very good with, um, of course, we have a great business school. We are, one of the best for nursing as well um but for international students i think our top programs are engineering biology also psychology and political science so those are the main areas of course we offer all types of programs we have more than 80 uh, programs on campus but i would say those are our favorite through international students yeah and uh, i want to bring up like another question this one is coming from stephanie as well uh, she is because you were mentioning that we were mentioning that at the beginning, right? As I, I forgot already the name of the program, but uh, yeah. So answering her uh, question, how can she uh, may I validate courses if I'm already? Uh, I, I think she she's mentioned that she's already in university in Peru. So then she will be a transfer student. That's a little bit different. So transfer students can can get a, their credits. A, transferred to the university um they will just have to get their transcripts evaluated by a company we we provide a list of companies that does this service and then with that we transfer all the credits that are kind of the same as the major that they pick here at csu pueblo so every university does it differently i have to say um so it's not a standardized uh process um, but how we do it at CSU Pueblo is that you will get these transcripts evaluated by a third party company, and then we will get all those credits into our system and match it to other courses here at CSU Pueblo. But yes, it can be done. Yeah, and that, so very thing also coming up from a user here. Um, he's saying like, could you please throw some lights on how to transit from bachelors from India to masters? in the US, in the, in yeah. the US? Of course, happy to help there. Um, it depends on what you wanna, wanna study. Uh, most programs will ask you for a GRE or a GMAT. Um, so I would say study for those, um, especially if you're in the engineering side of things that you need to study for that GRE and you need to have good grades. Um, once you finish your bachelor's in Bangladesh, uh, depending on the university that you're deciding to go, you might have to do the evaluation of transcripts as well to certify that you graduated from that university in Bangladesh. Um, and then with that, you can apply to the university and see what are the requirements of that university that you're applying. At CSU Pueblo, for example, to study a master's in industrial engineering, to give an example, you need a GRE, you need two letters of recommendation, you need to work on your statement of purpose of why you want to study at our university specifically. If you want to um, get graduate assistantship, you need to say why uh, in that statement of purpose. So 
it depends on what program you're trying to apply to. Yeah, and uh, these uh, th th these tips that uh, Anais is giving, we're gonna get to them very soon when we start talking about like the tips on how to better apply for for going to university in the U.S. But funny you mentioned that because I think like people knew about like how strong CSU was in, uh, is in in engineering because we got a lot of tracking on engineering. Juan Pablo here is saying that yes, he's interested in industrial engineering, which is something that yeah. we were just no, come over. Just mentioning. Uh, now I want to address a question from Hina as well since he sent it a couple of while ago. Uh, before applying for a program in a U.S. university, do you believe it's important to get in touch with a PI? Do you know what he means by PI? Uh, Hina, can you also let us know what do you mean by PI? PI, personal institute. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm trying to guess it, Renat. Um, yeah. If you can let us know what you mean, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs> Moving on to uh, Lucia's comment here. There's something called superior technician in the technological institutions in Mexico. Could I continue the bachelor's degree with the title that I already have? Correct, yes. And this will be considered not completely, but like a community college degree but it will be a little bit less credit so just so you guys know with the, a technical school in mexico it will be almost like an associate degree so you will get credits from that technical school into your program of course depending on what you want to study if you want to continue in the same field probably there will be more credits transfer in but if you want to totally change your path then it will be a little bit less so but yes, it, it can be done. Yeah. See you, Lucia. Uh, by the way, guys, just uh, to you, Lucia, and to everybody that's saying questions, we're going to put Anna's contact at the end. So yes. if you want to like have more questions about CSU Pueblo and how you can like, you know get things going, uh, you'll be able to reach her out as well. But we still have lots of time here. So let's move it on. Uh, I just want to like ask you, because as you can see, like, Lucia's from Mexico. Uh, is already from India, Bangladesh, I think, I think it was Bangladesh. Uh, we have Lisa here from Argentina. So many different countries. Where, like, can you talk about the diversity of students in CSU? Yeah. Because what can they expect? Like, we'll see if she ends up going to Mexico, to the CSU to study uh, and her, her bachelor's there. Well, that's something that we're very, very proud of. We have 33 countries represented in the stu student body. Plus, not only the international side, but also in the domestic side, 49% of our student body is diverse. So you will find people from all walks of life. Um, you will also meet people from all over the United States. You will uh, meet students from California, from Hawaii, from New York, from every place in the U.S. as well. So not only is the international side diverse, which is 33 countries represented, but also in the domestic side, the U.S. side, you will meet people from everywhere in the U.S., which is awesome because then you meet friends from everywhere. Hopefully they invite you to their home <laughs> uh, while you're here. <laughs> and it's not like those because sometimes people are scared of like, oh, my God, you know, usually they're the, the, the American students will have their own groups and the internationals will be left out. But it's not like that in reality in CSU, you know, it's everybody's no. That's the beauty of a smaller university, to be honest, because everyone knows each other. And even if you like, especially in classrooms, if you if your classrooms is 16 to 21 students, you're more likely to meet the person that is next to you. Probably they're going to be sitting to you, next to you the whole semester. So you're going to meet people no, mat no matter if you want to or, or if you do, <laughs> to be honest, because you get used to it. So. That's something that is beautiful about a smaller university is that you will get to know people very, very easily. True. Uh, before we move on again, we have a question here from Gustavo asking about like, are there any SAT requirements? Let me put it here. Great question, Gustavo. We actually just became um, a test optional completely, not only for international, but also domestically. So it's not a requirement is it something that i will suggest you doing yes because that will get you more scholarships but it doesn't affect 
the way if you're accepted or not into the university. So it depends on what you want to do and your grades. So that, that will be a question of depending your grades. I will tell you maybe take the SAT um, so you can get better scholarship. But if not, if I don't see it necessary, I will tell you don't do it. So it depends on your case to case. Cool. So it's actually like it's optional that if they want to like increase your chances of okay. it. So it, that, that's kind of a big deal. Like it's pretty it like big deal. where to go because guys, so some other universities will be very like challenging in terms of the, all the requirements they might get. So the fact that you CSU doesn't require that makes things way easier. Huh? Way easier. I believe so. And and like for example, like. If, if we have a scholarship that already is based on your exam, for example, in Colombia, they have IFES. Instead of doing the SAT, you just do the IFES, which you, you have to do to graduate from high school in Colombia. You can replace it the same with NM or the same with the Sunan in Korea. So it depends on where you're from. There might be a scholarship that is created for you. So you just have to let me know later on. Yeah, and uh, so I'm actually going to ask you to explain a little bit about the requirements uh, yeah. for both undergrads and, and master's programs because we have like lots of questions coming coming up on on that. Like Sakina just asked something else here. Do they need to high rate at school to get scholarship? Uh, do Do you need is it, is it high scoring like from your high school scores and, and all that? Do you need that to to apply is that a requirement and also to increase your chances of uh, getting some uh, financial aid? So yes, for financial aid, yes, it's require a good GPA. Um, depending on which scholarship you're applying to, depends on the GPA that they require. But the requirements are very basic. Of course, it's applying online. That's the first step, getting your the first foot on the door, which is applying. Then we will ask for things like the copy of your passport to know your identity. And the other thing will be the transcripts of high school or university, depending on where you're at. Uh, for undergraduate students and for grad students, we ask for the evaluation of their transcripts. So uh, at, at the end of your high school or university, we'll ask, ask your transcripts to be evaluated by a third party company and they will do an amazing job telling us if there is anything that it can be transferred into the university or not. Like, for example, if you went to an Ivy school, you might be able to get some, tra some transfer credits out of it into the university because there are higher um, advanced programs in, in those Ivy programs. So just so you guys know, you could get some transfer credits out of high school as well. Um, also, we will ask, depending on where you're from, we will ask for a TOEFL or an IELTS. So that's very important, depending on where you're from. If your first language is not English, we will ask for a TOEFL or an IELTS. Depending on the program, will depend the score. Most of the programs just require 61 um, to be accepted into the, the university. And the other thing that we will ask is, financial statements. Why do we ask for financial statements? I know this is going to be a big thing. Uh, the financial statement we ask because of the immigration process that you will do after being accepted into the university. So it, those financial statements will tell us that you're more likely to get the visa or not. And it's required for us to process immigration documents to you and for you later on to do a visa appointment. So if any well all universities in the u.s will require you a uh, financial statement that's the reason why we're it's not because we want to be noisy is because we want uh, we need to make sure that we are giving everything that yeah. we have to the immigration uh, officer at your university cool uh by the way can you hear me because i just put it like another headphones on i'm not sure if it's yeah, you can hear me well, right? Can you hear yes. me, guys? Cool. Uh, so, cool. All right. Uh, let's move on here because uh, we have, like, a can't keep it up with so many questions. <laughs> yes, it's very active. But, yeah, so let's let's see, like, the, the this is Carla Vargas, like, sending uh, her, like, she's saying that I graduated from high school in 2020. I'm going to go to university here in my country next year to start that major, but I want to study in the U.S. Can I apply next year, even if I already started? Great question, by the way. Of course, of course you can. You can, and you can get those 
credits that you did at your home university transfer into the university. So yes, you can, of course, that's never a problem. It's actually easier if it's only one year that you've done, it's super easy to do. Cool. Uh, and then moving on to a different subject, just to address this question here, coming from Max Meneghini. Hello, what is the average workload in hours per day in a graduate degree, MBA, master, et cetera? Is it possible to keep a home office job? I have to say, I'm loving the question so far. Ooh, wow, this is a great question. It's a great question, Max. Good one. Because, guys, I'll be honest with you, sometimes, like, we're doing this because we want to explain to you everything. But studying abroad, it, it takes a little bit of, you know, hard work. you got to do it, some, something. So some people, says, sometimes they just like, oh, scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. We cover that, but there is so much more to cover. So I have to say, great job with the questions so far. Keep in sending those. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and I do your saying. <laughs> well, this is a great question. And just so you guys know, guys, tomorrow we're going to be part of the Student World uh, MBA virtual fair. So so because uh, Max just brought, brought it up, we're going to be part of that MBA virtual fair. Um, but OK, so talking about workload, it depends on how many credits you take, Max, to be honest. It, minimally, you need to take nine credits. What does that mean? Three classes. That's very much what it means. You're taking three classes per semester. That's the minimum that you can take. So with a math, with an MBA, I wouldn't record the first semester is going to be getting used to. So it might be a little bit harder to keep up with a home office job. But I will say 90% of our international students work while they study. So they work at the university while they study. So if they can do it, you can do it as well. So. E, e, and, and, and something else, because I like um, my team is passing me more questions here. Um, just uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you very quickly, because we got some, uh, we, we've been receiving some uh, some questions that I find it like related to those to those mm -hmm. people looking for a masters and MBA. This is more like you know a career focus, right? And I have here uh, Hanan Morin just saying that. He expects a great to have like a great work experience as well. So I wanted to cover that because I know that you universities in the US are well known for the support they give like for students when entering like the job market and so on. Can you tell a little bit about like what CSU does um, for like their master's students, or even for the graduate students to help them enter the like the, the job the market? Job. Yeah, and I'm gonna start first with undergrad to be honest, because I think your career should start anywhere where you are but you can work uh, one of the thing one of the myth that you have that we have about the us is that you cannot work while you study yes you can it's just that you cannot work outside campus you can work on campus you can work up to 20 hours uh, a week on campus and uh, after certain time into your career you can apply for something called cpp uh, which allows you to work outside campus but it needs to be in the field of your study. So if you're an engineer, it needs to be in engineering. So, and so just so you guys know that there is ways, but one of the things that every American university have is a career office. So a career office is pretty much their job is to help you become job ready pretty much. So they most likely will host uh, workshops on how to write your CV, which is very different to writing a CV in Europe or in Latin America, because American CVs are completely different. How to do interviews, which is important, how to dress for an interview, and how to find those internships. Because at the end of the day, what are the tools? We give you all the tools, but you need to use them. We bring also um, a companies to our campus. So we have career fairs where companies come to our campus to recruit workers because they're looking for young talent. And especially because they know our programs are excellent, they want our alums to come and work for them later on or to do an internship during the summer or anything else. So just so you know, all the possibilities are there. Cool. And uh, so just to be in, a, you mentioned that, but just to like uh, to be clear for everybody, once you finish your studies, you can um, apply for an OPT, uh, which is like you can stay an extra time, right? Um, 
Can you tell again for how long can you stay if you finish like your undergrad and how long can you stay if you finish your master's? Of course, it depends on what you study. So if a student studies um, business, for example, they have to, up to 12 months to stay after they graduate. But for example, if you study engineering or anything related to STEM, because that's the only caveat. If you study anything related to STEM, you can get the 12 months that everyone else does, but they can renew those, those 12 months to two more years. So you get three years of OPT as a STEM student after graduating from a US degree. Yeah, and I just wanna point it out, guys, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Colorado and all that, but uh, Colorado has one of the, like, it's known for to be like one of the new startup hubs in the U.S. You have like cities like uh, Bolin, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, so so many places, right? So many like companies out there. So the, the, the job opportunities for for international students is just amazing out there in, in, the, in Colorado scenery, right? Yeah, we're actually one of the... For, we're one of the youngest uh, in in terms of most most young adults move to Colorado because there are so many jobs available at the moment in Colorado. So we're a very good economy, is strong. Um, so there is a lot of opportunities, to be honest. It's an amazing state. Yeah, I've been there. It's, it's really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, to address this quickly, Gustavo is asking uh, how he can uh, if he can uh, contact. Uh, 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 the counselor, which is you, <laughs> and also there are some other people like asking uh, your contact as well. We're gonna put it here, guys, at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. so you can uh, send your questions, and uh, she will help you out throughout the whole application process and, and so on. Uh, but moving on here, let me see if we have something. Oh, it funny enough, uh, here again, Gustavo Santana is saying that he's interested in mechatronics, which you pointed out. <laughs> is a great like a, one of the strong uh, areas of csu so you get to the right life we stuff we both yeah, like you're in the right space this is amazing yeah and but csu is really strong on that so good job uh what else what else what else we have here uh oh do you have uh, people asking if you have like pharmacy uh uh, pharmacy is usually a master's degree in the U.S., um, so we do have pre-pharmacy um, and or biochemistry if you want to study biochemistry, but we don't have it um, in the master level at the moment. Cool. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, does the university have a minor in languages as well? And this is yeah. just a, if I can build on this question because this is another. Uh, concept about the U.S., studying the U.S., because you have majors and minors, right? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things I love about the, about the U.S. is uh, you pretty much are building your career because you, get, you have majors, which is whatever is most interesting to you. For example, engineering is what's most interesting to you. But let's say you're interested also in music. Why will you not study music? You could do a minor in music and still get a passion that you're, that you're passionate about studying engineering as well. Or for example, or enhance your major. For example, students that study economics are more likely to do a political science minor because it's gonna help that economics major. It's gonna make it so much more stronger. In this case, um, having a minor in another language is amazing too for any career because the more languages you speak the more the better it is for you in the job market or anywhere else to be honest so yes we do have minors in languages we offer italian spanish and we offer fr uh, some classes in french as well cool by the way uh jay can you put it there where you're like where you're from uh yeah. Uh, we have another question here, holistic health. Uh, how about holistic health? I don't even know what that is. I do know. Sadly, we do not offer holistic health, but we do have an amazing health science program. Um, it doesn't touch so much on the holistic side, but it is still a great program. Cool. And uh, so we have here more, uh, so many questions, so, so, so many. But uh, I would like to, because we cover like the whole application process and all that. And yes. 
I just wanted you to mention like off the books, what tips do you give like to people like some of the like Samuel, George, Zahir, Carla, all of these people that we've, we've been learning a lot about their situation and all that. What tips do you give them to succeed in this effort when applying for, uh, for CSU? One of the things I'm gonna say is doing everything with time. The best tip I can give you is that don't wait until the last minute to do, do it. If you know you're interested, submit an application. That doesn't mean that you're gonna end up coming, but at least you have the first food in the door. And then little by little, we get to fill that box of what we of the requirements. Yes, maybe you don't have a TOEFL today, but you might have it in one month. So we can do the application, get you in the, in the door, then you work little by little on getting all the other requirements into the application process. Um, so just get the first foot into the door. It's, it, that's gonna make a huge difference. And with the more time you have, the better it is because you're gonna learn way more stuff instead of rushing it at the end. Cool. Uh, what else do we have here? Da, 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 da. Oh, people asking if you have if CSU has also like veter veterinary programs. We do have pre vet, uh, and we are um, we have a lot of students that end up going to CSU for Collins, which is our sister school for their masters in veterinary uh, studies. Oh, oh, Hinan, uh, he explained. So remember the PI classes, professor. Oh, and professor. And Investigator, a supervisor. Okay. Well, no, no, I'm trying to remember the question first. Yeah. <laughs> no. I have so many here, my friend. But, uh, <laughs> if you can repeat the question, that would be awesome. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're done. I know you were asking about if you needed to contact a professor investigator beforehand applying. It depends on the program that you're applying to, to be honest. Um, for example, if you're uh, applying to a master's in biology at CSU, yes, you will need to talk to a professor before applying because you're, depending on the type of thesis that you wanna do, depends if they're gonna accept you in the program. So um, it, it depends on what program you're interested in, to be honest. Yeah, so tell us here, Anna, uh, which program are you interested in? And remember that we, I'm guessing by your name, I might be wrong here, but I'm guessing you're from Brazil. If that's the case, remember that you mentioned here that, uh, and this is something very innovative, like the fact that they uh, take into account the NA uh, score, if you have a uh, NA as well, uh, when applying for like a, like a scholarship and so on. So, uh, Am I correct here or? <laughs> yes, you're correct. Yeah, if because of the NM. Yeah, if, if they're from Brazil, of course, yeah. Yeah, so tell us if you're from Brazil and also the person that you're uh, considering to apply. Uh, we have another uh, question that is very interesting here uh, from Gustavo. So, by the way, Gustavo is from Venezuela, I think, as you mentioned. Like, hey, uh, so, hey. Yeah. Uh, he's asking, like, what, what's the, the cost of, uh, to, of the application? The cost of the application is actually going to be free because you were watching this live. Wow! Oh. I have that surprise for you guys. So I'm going to, hopefully you guys can put this in the, in a little bubble, but the code for a free, for a free, for a waiver for, a, for an application is going to be AEG. Um, so yeah, so because you're watching, oh I'm giving you a free application, guys. So take advantage of it. You have six months to use it. So no rush, no rush, but it's there. So the code is AEG. So you said whenever you feel that you want to apply for CSU Pueblo. And that brings me like to the to the, the question like we came, we got here from Jordan, I think, asking like, okay, so if I want to apply, what is the first step? The first, if you want to apply, let's go to, and I think uh, you can share the link that I sent you before, um, but that you go to the our website, csupueblo.edu, um, and then you click apply. Then you follow the steps there. It's pretty much a form asking for your name, your, your academic history, 
um, is going to ask you what you want to study, <laughs> of course. Um, and then it will give you a list of requirements for you to fill in little by little. You don't have to do it immediately. And it's going to ask you for an application fee, but now you got it for free. So you just put the code AEG and it's free. So it's perfect. Yeah. So let me ask my team here uh, to put the, the link of the website for the application and also this code uh, under people can, can take a look and put it here on the chat as well, guys, so they can copy, but don't click it now. Don't click, cause don't click it now, don't leave us. We're still here. <laughs> You're using your headphones. If you click it, you're gonna you're gonna get out of this uh, of YouTube, and that's not a good idea. Yeah. No, we have still have too much to offer. And okay, so another question. By the way, oh, look, look how nice this car. She is so cute. Uh, <laughs> what about me? Now that they, oh, they're so cute. Oh, Carlos, so you're very handsome as well. So don't worry. <laughs> But uh, moving on to use AI because you said you've been like um, the, interacting so much with us today. Last question, not last question, my friend. You can send as many questions as you want. I have a gold medal, which I don't know what that means, in my bachelor's, and I'm doing my master's in pharmacy. How can I enroll myself in the PhD program? First, do you um, offer PhD programs? And we sadly, we do not. We only have a PhD program in nursing, um, but we don't have anything apart from that. So sadly, I can offer you that. But what I would recommend in your endeavors to find a PhD, find a PhD that offers what you're interested to do research on, um, because at the end of the day, those professors will have a say whenever they're looking at your file of admission. So yeah, think of that. Cool. Um, Jordan is saying, hey guys, great life. Do you have a list about like how to uh, start like the, the application for staff? Is, the, is there software engineering as well? Because this is like the hot topic, like the hot program of the century, like software I know, I know it is. Uh, we do not have software engineering, but we have computer information system with a software programming emphasis. So if you're interested in software, uh, in, or programming, we do have that. We also have cybersecurity, which is very a hot major right now. So just so you guys know, um, and the link that it, the student world just shared actually has a step by step on how to apply. So you can look it up there too. Uh, but don't leave us there. Yeah, look it up after. <laughs> cool. Um, user is asking if we have if we use Instagram. We do use Instagram. It's always a great time to ask for new, like, you know, followers and all that. Actually, I don't actually like the word followers, to, to be honest, because mm -hmm. we're like a community here at the student world. So, yes, we are on Instagram as well at the student world. Is CSU also on Instagram? Yeah, I'm going to share here our Instagram so you can follow us. We have a lot of content there about student life, about scholarships, about everything. So follow us too yep uh okay guys we're getting close to the to the end unfortunately but let me address just the final questions here by the way uh jordan is saying ah yay aeg free that is true good i'm happy that it makes you happy so yeah. and i have to say guys i, I didn't know about that too it was a surprise, hey, it was a surprise. i wanted to surprise you all cool oh and another answer by the way he's saying that uh, uh he's from brazil so i got that right actually interested on the master's program in science education. Interesting. That's a very interesting topic. We do have an education at, at, it depends on what you mean with science education. If you want to teach science as a teacher, yes, we do have it. But I don't know if science education is that what you mean. So, but just I'm sure, uh, Carlos, you're going to be sharing my email soon. So you can email me directly and ask me all these questions. Yep. Cool, guys. So uh, let's put here the Anais uh, contact as well. Uh, can you put it there on the screen? What an efficient team, isn't it? Uh, Very efficient. Guys, uh, that was it for today. Anais, thank you so much. It, can you believe it was one hour already? It feels like 15 minutes. It, it feels like 15 minutes. Everybody so. the same thing. Like, it, oh my God, it was one, we're going to be talking for one hour. I say,
believe me, it's going to pass so fast. You're not even going to feel it. No, but it's just I, it. But, but thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Carlos. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate the student world. So it, it was so like, I have to say, this went so well. Guys, so I love like the, the all the engagement and, and the, the questions you sent it. Again, this is uh, Anna's email, right? So she's been working for a long time for CSU. She knows all about it. And mm -hmm. so you want to, like, many of you ask questions. Oh, would you offer this program or that program? Make sometimes like they, like the the case now with the software engineering, like CSU doesn't offer that one particular. But maybe I think it was Jordan. Jordan, get in touch because maybe you get to know a little bit about the 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 program that they offer. And you you know keep your mind open because again, guys, like this is a great school here. Uh, it's an amazing place. Colorado is amazing. Like I can already imagine like the things that you can do on like getaway trips, like go to like amazing cities. The Rocky Mountains, you can go. We have sand dunes, we have mountains, we have so many things to offer. So I'm a little bit biased. So. so, but anyway, so yeah, so this is her email. So she's going to, you know, be happy to, to talk to all of you about that. And yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, just Jordan saying here, thank you message. Thanks, Jordan. Let's go ahead and apply after the lives. Yes, 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 Yay! yes. Why? Guys, let's get to like 10 applications today. I, think <laughs> I, I hope to see all your names in my email box today. So cool. really appreciate the time. Maria Fernandez, uh, Hina, and everybody else. Thank you so much for, for coming here. Uh, again, we put it here in the chat. I'll put it in again, the contact information for CSU. CSU is also on Instagram on social media, so go there, follow them, and get to know more what it can be your next university. So Anais, thank you so much for joining us here, and I hope to see you again in the future live as well. I hope so too, I hope so too. Thank you guys, nice to see you all. Bye bye Anais. Bye. That was it folks, I really liked today. I hope that you had a great time as well, because really like, it's it makes such a, a, a big difference, you know, when we, when we're like, when we feel like we're talking to people in the other side, like you guys on the chat there, like Gustavo, Gus, uh, Sakina, Yusa here, Gustavo, Maria, everybody. Like, otherwise, it feels like I'm looking at a camera and talking, you know, so boring. So, I it, it, it really gives us the purpose, you know, it, it, it shows that, you know, we're doing something that is benefiting all of you, and that's what it matters to us here at the student world. So, again, thank you so much for joining today's live. Uh, don't forget if, if you want to like if you're interested in the MBA program tomorrow on Wednesday the student world is hosting an exclusive event for MBA only okay so the website is the student dot world slash global hyphen MBA okay so the student dot world I'm gonna ask my team to put it here on the chat as well so if you're interested in MBA it might be a good place for you to, to take a look and for the rest of you, I hope you enjoy the ride. And again, I'll be here tomorrow with a different live and then next week again, every Tuesdays and Wednesday. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us. The student world, whatever you want to study, we know how to get you there.